So I'm going to do a quick video to show you how to fix your Tesla wall connector, or at least not fix it, override the, the problem that it's probably got. So normally on these type two connectors for a standard car, you would only have the five big pins, which are your, your power and the two little pins, which are your proximity pilot and your control pilot. But on a Tesla charger, you've also got this, this switch and a temperature sensor inside. And it's this switch or the temperature sensor in this connector that normally fails. But not a lot of people know this. You can open this charger up and you can put it into legacy mode where it will no longer require the temperature sensor or the switch. And it should, should start working again. So we need to open it up. Just so you're aware, there's a tiny screw normally here in the bottom of this plate, and this is really fragile. So you take the screw out and pull this up from the bottom very carefully, and it will hinge away from the top and there's some clips at the top. But you can be very careful with that because it's really fragile. Then once you're in there, there's six of these security torque screws, a little pin in the middle that you need to remove. And then before you pull this off, there's a ribbon connector that goes to this PCB. So you'll disconnect the ribbon connector from there, put it to one side. Once you're in, conveniently, there's some instructions to tell you what everything does. So we've got some dip switches down here, these two dip switches and this uh, rotary switch here that can change the settings. And what we want to do is we'll look here. So it's dip switch two in the up on position is in normal mode and then the down off position is in legacy mode. So we want to take dip switch two, which is this one on the right and move it down. The other switch is to do with your 240 volt supply. So you leave that alone. That's been configured by the installer and just you don't want to touch that. Then if you look down here, we've got four pins. Now these four wires, along with all of these big three phase wires, go into the cable that goes to the, to the car charger end. So these pins, pin number one and four, are your uh, proximity pilot and control pilot. I can't remember which way around they are. And the two in the middle are to do with this switch and the temperature sensor. Now those two in the middle, you wanna unscrew, remove, heat shrink, just put them out of the way, cut them off if you want and heat shrink them. And now it's in legacy mode, you won't need those anymore. So when you power this back up again, you'll be able to plug it into the car and it should just work like a standard type two charger. The other thing we can check, um, on this panel here, there's some little plastic rivets, just be careful when you pull them out. You can take them out with a little trim tool or something, but that will come away. Obviously, make sure the power's off before you do this. Um, there's another connector in here, this one down here. Now, this monitors the phases, the live phases and the neutral. So you've got four wires going. They've got neutral, live one, live two, live three, and they go up to this, up to here, which is the, um, the breaker. Now, I've seen quite a few of these where these wires have pulled out and it, it must be something to do with inductance or whatever, and they just try and go straight because there's so much energy going on and flowing through here that they just pull out. So that's worth checking while you're here. Just make sure those pins are all firmly inside that plug and haven't popped out and nothing's broken. But the, the main culprit will be those two wires go into the switch and the temperature sensor. And then once we put it in legacy mode, we're, they're disabled. So I'm going to unscrew these and I'm going to heat shrink this up. Okay, once you've heat shrink these two wires, or heat shrunk, sorry, you can tuck them out of the way somewhere. So I mean, they're perfectly fine to be tucked down here. You might want to zip tie them. But I'm just going to tuck them out of the way. Down behind the earth cable down there. All right, so there is one more complication, one more thing we need to do, because now when you power this unit up, it's going to throw an error because it can't detect the temperature sensor in the, uh, in the cable. Um, so if you've got an intermittent, intermittent issue with a broken wire in the cable that's making that temperature sensor, um, you know, suddenly not be reading where you're trying to charge and there's throwing errors and etc. We're going to override it. Now this is my solution. There's a 10k resistor heat shrunk in there, soldered to these two pieces of wire. I've got a ferrule on the end, or fer ferrule, whatever you call them, and a um, spade connector, or an open spade connector. Now what we need to do is supply this pin here, pin number three, with <clears throat> a link to the earth, and it needs to have a 10K resistor in place, which will represent about 20 degrees. So the unit will think the temperature in the connector is 20, 20 degrees. Now, obviously standard type two EVSC connectors don't have temperature sensors in, it's not a thing. So it doesn't really need to be there. And it's a purpose is for when these are run 
Um, some of these can run up to like 92 amps or something crazy, and it's more for those. Now, if you're just on a 32 amp supply or you're running this in a lower rate, maybe you're doing, like I have these because I'm doing solar charging, so I want to turn it down to six amps so I can run charge from the feed from the panels. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix fit this and then I'll show you how it fits. Okay, right. So now on pin three, we've got this cable that goes to a 10k resistor and then it goes down to an open spade connector down there on the ground, the, sorry, the earth connector that would go to the cable. This is going to trick this unit into thinking there's a sensor and it's going to think that it's running at 20 degrees. And that's all you need to do. So we've taken away the switch, we've connected the uh, the fake sensor and we've left the control pilot and the proximity pilot connected and we've put it into legacy mode on this number two and now it is good to test so i'm going to go and test it now so i've just rigged this up to test i've set this to six amps so i can use a standard bit of um, mains cable and i'm using my my other tesla charger as a test bed so I've got a 240 volt output adapter to this charger that goes to this one. And I'm going to also use a type one adapter because I'm going to test this on my trusty Nissan Leaf. So take the connector, charger's going. Car's charging. Safe to say that is fixed.